Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life, and I have a book for you that is hot off the presses. It is by Father Boguslaw Dabrowski, OFM Conventional. We call him Father Bogus, so I'm sure I mispronounced his name. I'm so sorry, Father. Um, Burn the Passport. These are stories from a Uganda mission. It was just translated from the Polish that he wrote it in. He, uh, let me read on the back. Well, well, stop at the name. Father Bogus was born in Nawi Sox, Poland? Ordained a priest in 1993, he founded a new Franciscan mission in Uganda in 2001. He worked there until 2020. Father Bogus is a doctor of theology and the author of two books on his time in the mission, Burn the Passport and Breath of the Sun. Currently, Father Bogus serves as a confessor at the Shrine of St. Anthony in Ellicott City, Maryland, and as a preacher for the Franciscan Mission Association. The title of the book, Burn the Passport, comes from some of the first European missionaries who came to evangelize. The Baganda tribe in Africa in the 19th century burned their passports as soon as they arrived. With this gesture, they removed the possibility of returning home when the work of the mission overwhelmed them. This act testified to their great faith, willpower, and determination as they did not want to disappoint God and those who sent them on their mission. This book is available for just $20 from the Shrine of St. Anthony in Ellicott City, Maryland. Um, it's number 12104. That's what it says. <laughs> Let's jump in here. Here's another photo on the inside. It is translated by Peter Krupek. Did I get that correct at least? I don't know. Sorry. Uh, the copyright is 2023. Again, so if you want to find it, uh, it's a project of the Franciscan Mission Association, www.franciscanmission.org. The editor was Joseph Hamilton, design cover, and Janeska Herman. The design was Barbara and somebody Kidda and gives you the website. The photos are from the author's archives. He has a number of thanks, including the Minister Provincial of the Our Lady of Angels Province of the Franciscan Friars Conventional, Father Michael Heine, who approved the publication of this book. And the book is dedicated to Father James McCurry, OFM Conventional. Now you've heard me talk about Father James before. So the book is taken in. There are a number of photos as with captions as well as the text. They're interspersed uh, throughout the book. You can see they're all black and white. I was a little disappointed in that. I thought they were going to be color. Again, this book is also available in Polish. Let me tell you a little bit more about the Franciscan Mission Association when we get to the end. Don't let me forget to tell you that. It also says you can view videos of the Uganda mission on YouTube. You want to search for Pope in Munyonyo, Gray Fires in Uganda, and the St. John Paul II Technical Institute in Kakuj, PMM in Uganda, the Polish medical mission. I'm going to hold that up. <laughs> so you can find videos of these missions as well. Let's get in here. The introduction starts right away. Uh, again, Father, picture of Father Bogus taking notes for the book and of uh, Ugandan crocodile at the source of the Nile where this biblical river begins. Ah, it's just after the introduction, then we'll hit the table of contents. So let me go ahead and read you the introduction. In 1986, when I was in Krakow on the course on the course at the university, one Sunday, I went to the Franciscan Church for Holy Mass. In the cloisters, there was an exhibition presenting events from the life of St. Maximilian Kolbe. The title of the exhibition was, There is no greater love when someone lays down his life for his neighbor. Franciscan Maxi Maximilian Kolbe gave his life in the Auschwitz concentration camp for another man, the father of a family. This exhibition shocked me so much that I decided to change my plans and join the Franciscan order. I have been a Franciscan friar now for 37 years. 
A few years later, in 1991, I was on pilgrimage to the Polish Marian Sanctuary in Czechoslovakia. It was announced that in Peru, the terrorist organization Sendero Luminoso had killed two of my older Franciscan brothers. Pardon me, I'm not going to try and pronounce their names. Their death was a shock to me, a young friar. I wondered that since there are such zealous missionary brothers in my order as these blesseds who are able to give their lives for Jesus, maybe I could go on a mission too. In 1998, during a retreat of prison chaplains in Krakow at the Sanctuary Divine Mercy at the grave of St. Faustina, I applied to go on a mission to Uganda. I was accepted and became the founder of the conventional Franciscan mission in Uganda, spending almost 20 years on a bush mission in Kakuch. Inside this book, you will find many stories of my experiences as a young Polish friar in the Uganda mission. I hope that you will be uplifted and inspired and understand the history and struggles of the church in Africa. Here's a photo of him with many of the young people. The table of contents. Oh, friends. Set out just how I would love it, right? Easy, clear, beautiful. Um, the chapter number is... Well, we have the table of contents. We have the introduction, even though we've already had the introduction. Chapter one, and it gives the title of it. And then all the subheadings with all their page numbers. It's got the dot, dot, dots to take you over. It's an easy to read font. Let me give you a little overview because you've probably never seen a book quite like this. And there are many chapters. So I kind of want to give you an overview. I'll just read the chapter titles. There is chapter one is first experiences in Africa, meeting with the missionaries of Africa. What am I afraid of? Mosquito between snowflakes, a new role people I live among. African Catholic ghosts and magic. Street craziness and lynching plague. In the land of patriarchy. Giving yourselves to others. And then chapter 11 is VIPs visit our mission from a king to a president. How are the chapters set up? pretty easy to see that it's a new chapter it has a bible quote and then we go straight into the subheading the page number is in the bottom center let's see if that continues throughout yes that is the place for the page number throughout um, flipping through you can find the subheadings very easily it's in a bold print and underlined um, let's look at this this is an awfully long quote in italics yes it was a text written by father yives Rigni, describing in detail the beginnings of Christianity in the kingdom of Baganda. So the quotes, instead of being indented, are all in italics. So that could be a little bit challenging for some people to read, but as italics go, this is pretty nice. It's a same darkness of font, so pretty nice there. That is something that would, would take a little time to get used to. Of course, the short quotes are just done normally. Um... Oh, I know this is a photo that is dear to Father Bogus's heart. Dr. Wanda Blenska was his teacher of tropical medicine during a nine-month missionary course at the Mission Formation Center in Warsaw in 2000, and her beatification process is currently underway. Let's see. Well, we were right there. Let's go ahead and read this little passage so that you can get a feel for the style, because remember, it was written originally in Polish, about Africa, and then it was translated into English. So let's see how it reads. I'm at the bottom of page 72 when it says, Renzori, Mountains of the Moon. I started preparing for the expedition. Every day we ran for 10 miles with Peter and our dogs Saba and Misiek. Every morning I did stretching exercises. I read books about mountain climbing. I learned in one of the bo these books that Dr. Wanda Blenska reached the Victor Emmanuel Summit in October 1955. I was intrigued with the fact that this holy woman, called the leper's mother, made this effort and considered it poignant. It's a pity I never talked to her about it while she thought... Mm. So there on page 74, there is a typo. It says, while she thought about tropical disease prevention, it means taught, taught, T-A-U-G-H-T. Um, so while she taught about tropical disease prevention in our mission preparatory course in Warsaw, Warsaw Dr. Belenska worked in the leper's hospital 
for 44 years in Buluba, Uganda. After the course, we took a trip to Rome to receive a blessing from Pope John Paul II. She was 90 years old then and climbed St. Peter's Basilica Dome so vigorously I couldn't catch up. What physical fitness she had! After Dr. Wanda lectured, I would invite her for a cup of tea and ask her to share all her African stories with me. Quite often, she told me stories like this. In Baluba, she, cared, she took care of schoolboys from the village. Villagers derogatively referred to these boys as the ones who had no shoes and wore ragged clothes. She taught them basic hygiene and how to dress better, even with the little clothes they had. At the same time, she instilled self-confidence in them and taught them not to feel bad just because they owned less than others. She would organize all sorts of competitions to give these excluded young men a chance to shine and build their self-respect. Her off efforts paid off. Indeed, the villagers were no longer treated as poorly. In preparation for our expedition, I tried to get as much information about this mountain range as possible. Claudius Ptolemy defined the location of the Romansori Mountains in 150 AD. These mountains feed lakes with their snowy peaks, which later turn into the Great Nile, he wrote. Many others knew and wrote about this place before Aeschylus, I, sorry, it's a Greek name, mentions it in 524 BC, as does Herodias in 484 BC and Aristotle in 350 BC. The actual name Renzori has been given to these mountains by the British explorer Henry Morton Stanley. He announced in 1888 his discovery of the mountains of the moon and the meanings of its name in the local language, mountains which make the rain. Indeed, it rains there 300 days each year. Higher parts of the slope are permanently covered in mist and snow. I'm going to pause there because we didn't really get to hear about the missions at all. You can see I did find one typo. It was a word very close in spelling and easy to get from context, so I won't hold that against them. Let's read over here about page 101 about Banzakizito and the bamboo bicycle. Banzakizito, which means children like St. Kizito, was, camp was organized every year for hundreds of kids. It lasted one week. Kizito is the name of the youngest Ugandan martyr who was killed when he was only 13 years old. These days, Kizito is the patron of children in Uganda. On Mondays, shortly before the afternoon, every kid from our parish gathered in the mission, even those who lived 20 miles away. After daily catechesis, Maria Whitman, a founder, sorry, a volunteer from Germany, helped the children to draw St. Kizito life scenes. Seba Gala, our teacher, followed with English lessons. Older kids had craft workshops afterwards. They made various toys. Girls made dolls using banana tree leaves and boys all kinds of vehicles. The most spectacular of all was a bicycle made by a 12-year-old named Kasasa. This bicycle was the real deal. It had a chain ring, rear sprockets, wheel hubs, and spiked wheels. The steel was used from an old bike. The rest was made of bamboo sticks joined together with rubber bands of an old tire tube. The tires were filled with plastic bags he found in the trash. At the end of camp, Kasasa rode his bicycle home some 10 miles away. This, if this is not remarkable, I don't know what it is. So I don't think it's the exact same bicycle, but maybe it is. It says a bicycle made by a boy. Cute, right? Here they are on a swing they made of a log. So there's many fun things as well. Um, and then some scarier things. This one said something about guards with AK-47s and new soccer fields. I'm on 106. Since I already had a soccer team, I decided to invest in a soccer field. I wrote a grant to build two soccer fields and filled it with the Polish Episcopal Mission... Sorry, filed it with the Polish Episcopal Mission Center. I was successful and received a grant for $2,000... USD. I rolled up my sleeves. I wanted to hire prisoners from Naka Songala Penitentiary. I already had a very good experience working with convicts back in Poland. My idea was that if the prisoners could do something good and productive with their time, the work might make them feel good about themselves, increase their dignity, and help them change their thinking and behavior for the future. Inmates enjoyed coming to work in the open rather than squatting in their cells. On top of that, I provided them with food that was definitely better than what they were eating in the prison. They all dressed in yellow coveralls to distinguish themselves from the rest of the crowd. Twenty of them climbed on the back of the truck with one guard with an AK-47 sitting on the box, and the other one in the cabin with me also with a loaded AK-47. I drove my crew in this configuration 20 miles a day. 
These people worked 30 days leveling the ground and planting the grass. That's right, in Africa, grass is not sowed, it is planted. It grows very quickly. Okay, it goes on and on. So lovely the work that Father Bogus has done. I'm excited to read it cover to cover. And I did promise to tell you more about the missions at the end. It says, we're on a mission. Founded 800 years ago by St. Francis of Assisi, the Franciscan Friars Conventional is a religious order serving in over 60 countries. The Franciscan Mission Association raises awareness and funds for the work of our friars. With their friends and benefactors, the FMA has provided hospitals serving with those suffering from leprosy and AIDS, maternity wards for remote villages without access to health care, clean water wells in drought-stricken lands, daycare, schools, and playgrounds for the poorest children in rural areas and city centers, and seminaries to accommodate Franciscan vocations. Your support of the FMA will aid the friars in continuing to care for the poor and growing the church around the world in countries like Romania, Uganda, Ghana, Kenya, Peru, Ecuador, India, and South Korea, Ukraine, and many others around the world. And you can reach them at www.franciscanmission.org. What a lovely book. It's pretty small. Easy to read. I always think this is a, a beach read. Um, and not that some of the things they encounter aren't terrible, but Father Pogus is such a joy in the Lord and just a delight. He's such a man of service. I have met him many times and heard some of his stories in person. Um, lovely, highly going to recommend this book. Friends, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. And may the good Lord bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.